Welcome back to Climatic. In this episode, we'll be looking at how to build a green and resilient grid. Demand for electrical power is set to soar as countries continue the effort to decarbonize with cleaner, greener technologies. Coupled with more extreme weather conditions, growing populations, and market fluctuations, the need for an adaptable, more resilient energy supply has never been greater. But can these increased demands be met, or will we all be left in the dark? With me now are Pradeep Pereira from the Asian Development Bank and Anders Hove from the Oxford Institute of Energy Studies. Thank you for joining me today. Anders, I'll come to you first. Our electrical grids are going through a fundamental change in the way they operate. One idea that's become very important is that of resilience. What does it mean for a grid to be more resilient? I don't think that there would necessarily be one clear definition, and worldwide that is actually a challenge, is that historically the word reliability or having a reliable grid has had many different definitions and quantitative measurements. In general, the idea of resilience has grown, I think, over the last few decades uh, in in tandem with the idea of sustainability, that we need to be more resilient against a variety of physical and economic shocks, as well as having the flexibility to use different sources of energy and to make sure that we have enough energy available to meet our demand. Pradeep, our grid system has been built over the last hundred years, and during that time, its design has remained largely unchanged. What issues are there with the way our grid is currently set up, and what solutions are there to overcome these flaws? When you have a, a top-down power system, you have few power plants which are connected to the high voltage transmission network. And then they basically, uh, the power flows from these power plants to the consumer. So if something breaks down in that system at the high voltage system, the entire system fails. Now in a, in a distributed system, uh, this is unlikely to happen because you are not dependent on a single source. You are dependent on multiple sources. So even if one or two sources fails, it doesn't result in the entire system failure. It seems to me that the grid operators need to change the way they're structured. Who is leading this change? Is it the grid operators or the consumers? What do you think, Anders? I would say that in general, it has to be led by policymakers. All of the choices that have led to the energy system that we had today really did emerge from policy. I would say that the market was not the driving force that led necessarily to, let's say, natural gas dominating the power system of the United States. It doesn't mean the market doesn't play a role. Certainly the high fossil fuel prices will probably lead to a clear incentive for many people to install distributed energy in the future. But that can only take place if policy supports that. And currently many places you see that policy is an obstacle to distributed energy. But this is not just a discussion about the best way to get power into our homes, is it, Pradeep? We need to reimagine how the grid operates so that we're also able to further decarbonize. Yeah, I mean, uh, as, as everybody knows, I think uh, there's an urgent need to combat the climate change. And a lot of countries have made commitments to net zero by 2060, 2050, 2070, kind of time frame. What is important is what we are going to do in the immediate time frame, that is the next uh, 10 years or so. During this time frame, I think uh, there's an urgent need to uh, address the increase in uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the power sector. Uh, for that, I think uh, we have to increase the renewable energy penetration. In most of the countries, uh, renewable energy contributes about 10 to 15 percent of the total generation. This needs to be increased to around 25, 30 percent uh, within next 10 years or so. Now, for that to achieve that, I think uh, uh, distributed generation plays an important role. Decentralization allows better integration of renewables into the grid. Anders, is the extra resilience gained from distributed generation inherently green? There's a statistic that among the largest utility companies in California, there's over 12 gigawatts of diesel generation in people's households or in, at businesses. So that's about a fourth of the generation capacity of the state now. So the fact is that consumers are turning to their own solutions. And so it's up to the state governments, instead of sort of rejecting the idea of having distributed generation, accepting that it's going to happen because the grid needs to have that resilience and it needs to have that backup generation. So how do we organize the incentives to make sure that those distributed generation and storage sources are as clean as possible? And that's that's just an example of California, but that applies to anywhere in the world. Anders just mentioned how consumers are finding their own solutions, even without incentives to do so. Pradeep, what do you think will be the role of consumers in a newly decentralized grid? I think going forward, the uh, consumer can uh, be what is called a prosumer. In addition to consuming, he can also produce and supply to the grid depending on the time of the day. 
for instance, if you have a solar roof system, uh, you can uh, supply power during the daytime. If you have an energy storage system, a battery system at your home, uh, you can store energy during the off-peak hours, then you can supply it during the peak hours. And also consumer can actively participate in grid management services through demand response, where consumer can uh, reduce his demand in response to certain signals, uh, price signals or some control signals issued from the grid management system in return for a certain fee. One final thought, Anders. Will we ever get to the point where we don't really need grids? Could consumers become not just decentralized, but fully independent? In the future, in the sense of not needing a grid at all or mostly generating our own power at home or in our offices, for example, that is not a realistic vision, but the idea that there would be more decentralized energy and that in general, energy would be generated more close to the actual end consumer and that um, grids would be primarily used to balance this decentralized generation over a larger geographical area. That is challenging the business model and the physical design of grids around the world. A fascinating discussion. Thank you both for joining me today. Decentralization could be the solution to both greater resilience and an overall greener power supply. But there are many barriers to overcome to make distributed generation a reality. Some of the biggest challenges are for the grid operators themselves. So next, we'll find out what solutions the grid operators want to help meet the changing needs of the market and expectations of policymakers and consumers. That's up next on Climatic. <laughs>